Henry, what's your topic today? My topic is I wanted to talk about some. I'm falling asleep. <laughs> I wanted to talk about something we never talk about on this show. Who are your favorite artists? Paintings and comic book. You want to start us off, my man? I'm trying to think. Um, I would say Greg Capolo is. Uh, yeah, he is. He's really good, though. I mean, like, I think his designs for every Batman character are my favorite. Uh, I think the the way he like designs like the Bat family and even like the villains as well. Uh, I always like even though Two Face was hardly in their run at all. Like whenever you saw him, I was like, oh wow, I really like that de- like Two Face design. Oh, for, as like a modern day <coughs> artist, I think he's really really yeah. Good. And I I, I can't wait to see ones. what he does in his future. I'm a little scared that he's partnering up with Mark Miller. Um, <laughs> Like I don't think he's like he's not one of my favorite artists, but I think the choices he makes yeah are really, on design is like some of the greatest shit ever. Um, that's something I never really think about, like paintings and stuff. You know, like I, I you love you I, some paintings. Though. Yeah, like I appreciate like uh, Catch me from, in my room, fucking Goya. Am I right? Um, <laughs> I I like appreciate old paintings and whatnot, and um. Like the Mona Lisa, and like I really love like abstract stuff. I know that those are two very different things, um, but I, yeah, I never got super into it. Like I've always appreciated it, but I never. It was never to a point where I wanted to like study up on it and like know like who like did these paintings and whatnot. But yeah. that being said, I always love going into art galleries every once in a while because they have a bunch of them downtown. Oh no, same thing. And I'll like into- walk in every once in a while and see what it's about. Same I'm thing. So- like everything I know about paintings is like from you. Is like anything you've shown me or anything other than that. Like I, I don't really know like any names or anything. I can just kind of like identify. <gasps> My favorite art gallery downtown, I think, is on Geary and Powell. Is the uh, Doctor Seuss one? Oh, I love it. Like I went tiny, to that one it's recently. Like in, it's like a hole in the wall, basically. I, I want to. If we, I ever have money one day, I want to get. A, I want to get a painting. I'm there. gonna fight Doctor Seuss. You, have you been to the <laughs> little comic book one? It changes all the time. Like that the, one's cool because it's like not comic book art it's like comic strips yeah which is way cooler mm. i the, when i went it, it was like yeah it was mostly comic strip stuff and like kind of like classic newspaper type of comic book oh stuff. that's cool um but then it was like the tmnt like anniversary thing and they had this whole section of just like tmnt comic book art and kind of like the evolution of where they gone and then like it ended like at the end of the museum they were like just showing the show. <laughs> just kids just everyone, watching it. Everyone who goes there is dressed as the Ninja Turtles, but none of them talked about it beforehand, so they're all Raphael. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as comic book artists go, um, you know I love me some Alex Ross because he's yes, like like do. I like the most gorgeous fucking comic book art I've ever seen in my life. It's like the. Like, if anybody, if any comic book artist is going to be taken seriously as, like, as artist is going to be Alex Ross, because he does, like, some fucking prime ass shit. It's ridiculous. Like, um, that shot of, uh, what's his name, Spectre in uh, Kingdom Come? Where he's, like, 20 feet tall in front of the Reverend. It's fucking gorgeous. Like, it really gives you a sense of his drawings really give you a sense of being in the presence of these superheroes and kind of like showing you how intense and oh, oh, like the greatest way of showing their power in their image that that's the thing is he he was the one who did kingdom come right mm-hmm. and so and that, marvels mm-hmm. i appreciate his style i love but his it ta- so much but it takes me out of it sometimes really you know? it like because of like how super realistic he like has his character designs and Kinda how has, it's like, like the reverse and like on you. Uh, yeah, it sort of has the reverse effects where I'm like, it's, it, so it's much. weird. It's it, it's weird. It's like too much almost for me. You know? It kind of takes it out of like the it being a comic book almost. Yeah, exactly, off, exactly. Yeah. For me, the problem is I have the same problem with Alex Ross's art as I have with Jim Lee's art mm. because it's super detailed and well done, but their artwork is always way too posed. Like there's no, it like, doesn't don't feel, feel natural like a at sense all. Of mu- movement. Yeah, because like whenever you look at Jim Lee's art, like it always feels like it's going. Okay, now Batman, I want you're like right it there. It feels very comic strippy. Everything's too like 
perfect in like beat, yeah beat yeah. yeah yeah very choreographed looking no yeah i totally get that and i do get the sense of like it having the reverse effect and kind of taking you out of it because really? it kind of takes away the and that's me i don't think it's like shitty art or anything no, but, no. Yeah, but yeah. just like trying to get into like into the comic it sort of takes right, me out right. of it. but i do love kingdom come yeah i think uh, for me like i i have had that like i had that with marvels um, but reading Kingdom Come, like, I like that story so much that, like, that plus his artwork got me yeah. so into and it. And I also, Jim Lee has definitely changed his art style throughout the years. I really love old Jim Lee. Like, uh, X-Men, 90s X-Men Jim Lee. 90s yeah. X-Men, also, um, Long Halloween. That's Tim S- Sale. Yeah, that's Tim Sale. Do you mean Hush? Yeah, Hush is the one that he did. Who wrote... You're thinking Long Jeff home. Loeb. Yeah. Jeff Loeb. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tim Tim Sale now <laughs> is not good. Tim Sale <laughs> then, though, um, is definitely... I really like it. Like, I, I like... Especially because that art style really fit in well with, like, the tone of Long Halloween and uh, Dark Victory. Yeah, like, the like, seven comics he did with Jeff Loeb, like, were all, like, his best work. Mm. Yeah, because he had... Jeff Loeb behind him, and as well. they don't they all do the don't they um do like the Spider Man Blue and Hulk Gray and whatnot together. Spider Man Blue, Hulk Gray, Daredevil Yellow. Yeah, they did all oh, three of the so Batman's. Yep. Uh, Catwoman when in Rome, and my favorite of all those stories, Superman for all seasons. Right, you were mm. talking about that yesterday. How that was like your favorite one. It's something it's something I want to give a shout out, and I don't know who the artist is per se, but Max Landis. Um, is currently writing um, American Alien. American Alien was a, the current Superman run, and I've seen like shots of it. I really like the artwork in that one. That might get me into it. I'm gonna do some research real quick on Wake the Dead. I want to find out who that artist is because I really like the artwork for that. Who are some of your like favorite like paint like um, painters? Yeah, like painters. So I don't. Here's the thing. A lot of people always talk about the Renaissance as like this great period of art, but Renaissance art is so boring. Yeah, because it's all. I feel like people. It's do all. That because it's, it's all. So it's all yeah. one tone. You know, it's all one tone. Like, yes, th- this is great. Uh, and also, like, but it never like tries to change anything like drastically. And like another I big that. problem with it is like a lot of it's like fresco stuff, so it doesn't age well. Yeah, because it's all like falling off. Like, do you know why the Last Supper's in such bad condition now? What? So originally with fresco painting, the entire idea was like you do it with wet painting. Mm. You like wet plaster with the paint. Okay. But Leonardo da Vinci was like, but that doesn't let me mix the colors as much Mm. afterwards. So I think I'm going to try it with dry plaster first. But that led to it immediately flaking like when Leonardo da Vinci was still alive. Oh, wow. But interesting. Like I don't really like Renaissance painting. I feel like Leonardo da Vinci was the best of those because he yeah. had more color to it. Like, when you look at, like, Michelangelo's art, it's so, like, dull and one note for a lot of it. Mm. Like, it's technically perfection, but no emotional connection. But right. But then you have, like, the Baroque artists, like Caravaggio, with, like, all the sh- those shadows and emotion. And I really like Baroque art. Mm. I think my favorite painter is... From, like, the older school is Goya. Mm-hmm. What has he done? He did the 3rd of May. It's the picture where it's, like, you get the gunman, and then you have the guy with his arms stretched out. Oh, okay, all right. And he did Saturn devouring one of his sons. Oh, wow. You've, you've probably seen it. You should look it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really love Goya. There's a lot of, like, 20th century artists I really like. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Paul Klee, I really like his art. What else has he done? Uh, his work isn't as immediately identifiable. Yeah, that's, I, I can't recognize that name. Because, like, 20th century art, for the most part, it's like if you're not Pica- Picasso, uh, Pollock, or Warhol, no one's going to recognize you by name. Yeah. Um, also, Van Gogh. I, yeah. I would love it's to get crazy yeah, fucking he is Van Gogh, but Van Gogh in Clone High. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's just on the phone. Um, the suicide hotline thing. Um, <laughs> he I is. I find everyone wants to laugh at me. <laughs> um, and the, like just hearing his story is just really, really upsetting too. Yeah. Of, like how he was, de- he was never appreciated during his time, and um, he and would actually eat his paint. 
Yeah, like he was fucking. He was on another level, and his paintings. I <laughs> he think he was on another level, son. <laughs> uh, I and I think his work. I would say is some of my favorite that I've like. Actually, when I think about paintings, I, I think just uh, the way he can um, imagine art, just in like the air and in the sky and whatnot, is is, is something special. Um, yeah, there's something about his paintings that like it, it's it's almost like kind of a sick, beautiful sense of seeing how he saw shit. Yeah, and um, like I want to see, sh- I want to be able to see shit like that and put it on. Something. And if you ever want to cry even... really hard, watch the Doctor Who Van Gogh episode. I was about to say, I was about to say, <laughs> no matter what I've learned about Van Gogh, everything I know about him is that Doctor Who episode because it's so sad. <laughs> it is. You, it, it's you like, see, like the most documentary upsetting. about Van Gogh years ago. Van Gogh saw ghosts all the time. <laughs> so it's not telling me the artist, but I found out that Steve Niles is the guy who wrote Wake the Dead, and it explains why I like it so much because he also created Thirty Days of Night. Is it Ben Temple Smith did the art? Probably. I was You're figuring up. that. Um, and he also did Fear Three, the game. I love that series. Did you love Fear Three? <laughs> I thought it was okay. <laughs> it's kind of like what happened with Dead Space 3, where like, oh, I just liked it so much that I was just like, eh, it's not that bad. I don't mind getting fucked. It's not that bad. <laughs> Wake, Wake the Dead is uh, not Ben Temple Smith. Oh, okay. It appears to be a man named Chi Yang Ong. Well, that guy, it's, that guy fucking rules. It's a more cartoony style. Yeah. Mm, mm. Is this the kind of artwork? Well, no, it's super dirty, actually. Uh, huh. Dirty, gonna, like I'll it makes you page. feel like you just did something nasty to exactly. your exactly to your like second cousin once removed. <laughs> uh, so my favorite comic book art. I've never been a big fan of three D looking comic book art because yeah, I feel and that's like... what and that's what um Kingdom Come does. Alex Ross. Yeah, that, it makes it feel sort of. 3D ish in a way that it's just the way he uses shading. Oh, I thought you were saying that he was like a 2D artist. I was like, no, that's like the complete opposite of what he does. <laughs> um, like, but like, but like, I feel like artists like Jim Lee, Steve McNiven, like their artwork is what I don't like about modern comic book art because it doesn't really feel like a comic book anymore. They're trying too hard to be realistic. Yeah, yeah. and not. But you're also not going all the way to like a Hellboy type of. Well, I do like Hellboy's art, but like I my, love it. My favorite of like those kinds of artists, like I really love like more abstract comic book art, like Sam Keith, right? Like the guy who did the Max mm-hmm. and uh, John Paul Leon. He drew, uh, he drew parts <clears throat> of New X Men, and he did the artwork for uh, Earth X. Is that why you like? Is that also why you like um, Arkham Asylum so much? Is it because of the artwork and oh, that yeah. is so abstract? Yeah, yeah Dave McKean. Yeah. But, like, that's the only comic book he ever really drew. He mostly did covers. His fucking Two-Face thing is so disturbing. <laughs> I, love his I love his clay face. Oh, yeah. His clay really face good. is really good. Oh, that is really good. Uh, let's see. What are some other comic book art? Well, have to call out my man, Jack Kirby. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Because uh, Jack Kirby's a man, and comic book art wouldn't exist without him. Yeah, he's kind of... Is. He's, like, that one guy that, like, we don't even need to even say it. Does he just know? Yeah. <laughs> He popped into your head, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> um, the one I will have to also shout out is Mark uh, Bagley, who did the artwork for the Ultimate Spider-Man run. Because mm-hmm. that is, I think that's like a good like sort of in between of like realism versus stylized. Yeah, and it's sort of like it, it, it's a good like in the middle where like oh like this isn't like super fucking like cartoony comic booky, but it's not real enough or it takes me out of it and that's like what I really really appreciated about Ultimate Spider-Man yeah it's really funny looking and I also I had to look up that name and it makes me sad that the first thing that pops up when I look up Ultimate Spider-Man is the TV show and I'm like no no it was something else and it was something so much better (laughs) it's really funny looking back at early volumes of Ultimate Spider-Man because you have such a feeling of this is right when manga was getting super popular with yeah, kids because yeah. it has like that coloring and style it does, to it. It does. And speaking of manga, one of my favorite manga artists is uh, Junji Ito. What did he do? He did all of this horror manga. Like he did Uzumaki. He did oh. he did uh, Gyo, uh, the mystery of an the enigma of Amagara Fault, and uh, Hellstar Ramina. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Hellstar Ramina is one of my favorite short stories ever because. It's about a. Pl- they discover a planet coming towards Earth to eat it. 
Damn. Jesus Christ. There's a scene where it eats the moon. Is it the same moon that uh, crushed Chewie? <laughs> <laughs> Chewie's dead. <laughs> um, interesting topic. Not one I would have ever thought of. So I, I appreciate that. I liked it. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I wouldn't have seen us getting around to like talking about oh, Smith and ben Smith. Oh yeah, what has he done? Uh, uh, Thirty Days of Night fell with Warren Ellis. He did a lot of the Silent Hill comics. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's the reason Thirty Days of Night made me not be able to sleep for a while. It's a, it's a really creepy art style. Yeah, interesting. It's super, just kind of puts you into that eerie state. Like of it, it feels like everything's constructed with wires. Like it's really yeah. weird, but I really love it. Yeah, good. Again.